Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you five reasons why you should be shooting tethered right now. Hey guys, thank you so much for coming back to the channel. My name is Tommy Reynolds, and as the name suggests, we're gonna be talking about tethering, and if you don't know what tethering is, it's basically the process of you connecting up your camera up to your laptop via a USB cable, so that you can, while you're shooting, get a near instant view of your images as they're being shot um, via a USB cable, hence why it's called tethering. If you've uh, never shot and you're wondering what's the benefit of it, then we're gonna look at those right now, those five reasons right now. Starting with number one, you can check your focus, your color and your exposure a lot easier looking at a big monitor versus your little three inch screen. Now whatever tethering program you're using, you can use Lightroom, you can use Capture One. I personally use Lightroom and I can zoom in on a one-to-one -one zoom and I can see if I've nailed the focus and that's obviously really important because I don't want to go back and have to reshoot it, do I? So it might, if I'm able to check that a lot easier on the laptop versus looking on my screen, zooming in all the time, so having that and I'm able to check the exposure if it's really, if it's absolutely correct because ultimately I'm gonna be editing it on my laptop so I might as well check the exposure as it appears on my laptop versus my screen. So I could use my histogram but I prefer to just see it in real time on my laptop so that I know that what I see I'm gonna be able to work with. So that'd be tip number one, I can check my focus, I can check my color and I can check my exposure. So tip number two, it allows me to slow down what I'm doing and I find I shoot far less because I'm really thinking about each shot because I know that I'm gonna see them in my peripheral vision when they pop up on my laptop. So I don't wanna just see the same image over and over and over and over again. So I like to slow down and shoot less. That's the way I kind of work when I shoot my portraits. And this can be aimed at not only portrait photography, but if you're someone that does product photography as well, then this would be great to shoot tethered as well with that. And ultimately that means I have to edit far less um, later on. So I have fewer images to work with, but they're all better images than five of the same thing, than something of five of the same thing. So I've got less time in the editing room and the less time I'm spent in the editing room, the more time I'm out um, earning money, shooting. So the least amount of time I can spend in the editing room, the better. Tip number three is instant feedback. Now this is probably my favorite tip because there are so many advantages with this tip. Not only do the models get to see instantly on the monitor what, how the images are gonna look, but also your entire creative team can get a vibe and an idea of what your vision is and what you're trying to achieve. So not only can the model see it, but your hairstylist and your makeup artist and your art director and just literally everyone around you can see how the images are looking. So the hairstylist might see something, oh, I need to jump in and fix that because they've seen it on the monitor because it might look different on the monitor versus when they see it in real life. The makeup artist might want to do a tweak, but they might not have done these tweaks unless they saw it on screen because they, they, can't, they don't see what the photographer sees. But this is the beauty of it and why I love shooting tethered. My entire team can see exactly how the shots are looking. They can make tweaks and adjustments. Otherwise, they're gonna look back and go, oh, I should have changed that, should have done this. And it's too late by then. So if you can do it there and then make adjustments and get feedback from the model as well. So he or she can look at the pictures and think, yeah, I really like this. I'm not keen on this. So maybe we can do more of that. So you just get an instant vibe. You can see what they like, what they don't like. I don't move on to another setup until my team and the model and myself, we all feel that we're ready to move on because it's a collaborative process. So when we're all happy, then we move on. And we're only able to know that because we shoot tethered and everyone's able to see how the shots are coming out, if that makes sense. Tip number four, this is really important, you get instant backup. So when you tether into your laptop, you are backing up the images. The images are going on the laptop. They're, they're not there temporarily, they're there permanently. So if you've saved them to an external hard drive or they're on the internal hard drive, they're there. So at the end of your shoot, you don't have to take the card and put it to the hard drive. They're already there. So it's an instant backup. So now when the shoot's done, they're already in two locations and you've not really done anything. They're on the card and they're now on the laptop instantly. Tip number five, last tip, you, <laughs> you get to edit like a ninja. 
So if you're like me and you edit in Lightroom, you can tether straight into Lightroom. And because down the side I already have uh, presets that I've bought or I have made myself, I can throw a preset to give them an idea of what it might look like when the edit is finally made so they can see instantly how the shoot's going and how the edits may look. And you can get their feedback as well, not just on the shoot, but the editing and you could, by throwing on a, a filter or a preset, whatever, to give them a vibe. So then I get a vibe of maybe the kind of tone, the kind of color, the kind of moodiness that they like. So I know that when I go and sit back in my editing room, I'm gonna spend far less time in the edit because I know exactly what they want. And sometimes I'll even edit an image there and then as they're maybe getting changed. And then so before they even leave the shoot, I've already emailed them one of their images in high res with, with an edit on that they can use instantly to use on social media. So you get to edit like a little ninja by doing it this way. So that would be my last tip is number five is edit like a ninja. Now if like me, you use Lightroom, you're pretty much halfway there. And so if you wanna start tethering, all you need is the USB cable really. This is by a company called Tether Tools. And what's great about their cables um, compared to other USB cables is these are a lot thicker. The um, the padding, I guess, if you like, <laughs> I don't know what the word is, around the wire itself is thicker, so it's stronger. And because it's orange, it's easier to see. It's a nice length as well. So this is by a company called Tether Tools. I will leave this link in the description below. So that's all you really need. So I shoot with a 5D Mark III, so this is a USB 2 cable. If you have a newer camera, then it's probably a USB 3 cable, so that will transfer even quicker. But that's pretty much all you need to get yourself going is the cable itself. If you don't want to use the cable, then technically there is a way of doing it wirelessly, and that is using a Wi-Fi SD card that you can put inside your camera, which I did use on one of my shoots where it was tethered tethering to the iPad. Now, when it was tethering to the iPad, there were only small JPEGs though, purely as a way so the mum can see the photos as they were coming in. It's a little bit of a delay time, that's the only thing with it. I wouldn't totally recommend it. I do prefer using the wire method, but if you are on location, then maybe you wanna give that a go. I will leave a link to that special SD card in the link below as well. If you wanna know what table I used, it's a very basic one that I bought from Amazon. I think it was like 30 pounds, just a basic laptop stand that I use, as you can see here in all of my videos where I use Tether. Um, it's, you can adjust the height, adjust the tilt as well, which is quite nice. And so I will leave a link to that table as well in the description below. That's about it from me, guys. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. If you liked it, then please make sure you hit that like or share button or subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube, you can subscribe right here. And uh, if you like this video and you wanna see more behind the scenes videos, then click here, and that will take you to all of my playlist of all the behind the scenes from previous shoots in where I use the tethering process. Thanks ever so much for watching this video, and as always, I will see you in the next one. Cheers, guys, bye-bye.